When Microsoft said jump, the world jumped. For years, it was the unchallenged leader of the technology world. Now its rivals, Apple, Google, Facebook, are consistently streets ahead. But while its share price languishes, Microsoft's researchers are working on extraordinary ideas for the future of technology. Our technology correspondent, Benjamin Cohen, was given exclusive access to the company's vast headquarters near Seattle to see their latest inventions and asks whether Microsoft can once again become the company which defines computing. The future. Will it look like this? An LCD that or see. this? We can have a hand or maybe hand. even this? Drop it into your hand. That's what Microsoft then, thinks. But it has some convincing to do. Its share price has been languishing while others grab the headlines. So what does tomorrow hold? Seattle on the misty coast of Washington State. Home to seafood, Starbucks, monorails, Jimi Hendrix, and in the western suburb of Redmond, Microsoft. They call it the campus, row after row of office buildings stretching over 600 acres. It has its own network of computer-guided cars and even its own football pitch, although they call it soccer. Inside these buildings, there are tens of thousands of people coming up with innovative ideas. In fact, they came up with something rather like Facebook long before Mark Zuckerberg did, except they never publicly launched it. The challenge for Microsoft now is to turn all of their new ideas into cash before a rival does. Come on in. Forget the Jetsons, this is the real home of the future, Microsoft style. And forget your keyboard and mouse, everything here is controlled by voice, touch and gestures. So here you can see we're in my uh, daughter's room and, and the nice thing about it is, is uh, basically she has this ability to have her, her room wake up. So notice as I walk in and I say wake up, the room wakes up like it might when she's getting up in the morning. So essentially it brings up information, time on the walls, it, uh, puts up this digital wallpaper across all of her walls in the room, which of course she's customized just the way she liked it. Now, if I walk into the room here and yeah. I gesture over at the sun, you can see it's brought up a menu system. Right. And so now I can just use my hand to pick the various different hey, well, things that can be applied to the room. So Granny's, how can we contain so Granny? I can, right? So again, we could, uh, if I uh, come over here and hover on Grandma's room, and now you'll notice that the room's a little more sedate in grandma mode, right? So it's got pictures of her favorite people, her husband, even a live webcam spot of her dog's favorite chair. Or if you prefer the undersea look, that's possible too. All this is part of Microsoft's plan to reinvent itself and not be seen as rather dull and just a little too square. Microsoft is actually hugely profitable, but what's strange is that the company's share price doesn't reflect that. Over the past year, Microsoft shares have risen just 2%. Apple, on the other hand, is up more than 80% because investors think Apple is more likely to grow. Microsoft rode the PC to success, and now investors are asking themselves, where's the next rocket for the company to ride? And it's not obvious yet. One answer is better marketing. Like many towns, Seattle has an Apple store, and further down the mall, Microsoft has opened a very similar prototype store devoted to its own products. Hi, welcome to the Microsoft Hi, store. Thank you. you can probably see where they got the inspiration from, but is it enough to make Microsoft cool? Why isn't Microsoft considered as cool, both by technology users and by um, Wall Street? I think, you know, I, I, I look, speak to my friends and they think some of the technology we've got is pretty cool. You look at Connect, the last 60 days we've had of Connect, everybody I speak to thinks that's a pretty cool technology. Windows Phone 7, I think, you know, the people I speak to, whether it's friends or family, show to them, they think it's pretty cool technology. There's some pretty cool technology in the labs too. I can touch it, and then I touch you, and then you touch the wall. And it's as if the information was conducted through like our electricity. bodies. Like electricity, yeah. The pictures or videos are projected from above. We're doing, we're doing Sensors all. read the positions of our bodies and move the pictures in response. It's called light space and it's so new that this is the first time they've let TV cameras film it. One thing that's kind of fun is we can then pull this object into my hand and so the object now has almost like a physical uh, representation of this red ball 
and the red ball behaves like a red ball anyway, so it wants to... So I can try and... Yeah, oh I can God. pass it to you, and you can pass it I'm back really to me. I'm really bad at sports. There we go. Thing. And then I can then touch the wall, and then it trans trans forward um, up to the wall. Do you have any idea what this might actually one day be used for? Or does that not matter? It doesn't really matter right now. What we're really doing is exploring the concept and uh, of a future device, maybe, uh, like a chandelier, like this device. Yeah. Something a little dressed up a little bit. It would transform the entire room into, into an interactive surface. So for instance, here Microsoft has 850 people doing Blue Sky's research, coming up with ideas which could be the next big thing 10 years from now. But the guys in the lab aren't always good at selling the ideas to the people who make the product. Those two groups of organizations have not communicated together always ideally well. And so you often see Microsoft enter on market too early or with something that doesn't really execute on the, the way that, that Apple is later able to do. Here's an idea that squarely aimed at Apple territory, a screen that can sense not one or two touches, but millions. There's two million sensors within the panel. There is no spot on here that can't be touched. We basically can see unlimitedly. We can have 100 hands on here and it would see them all at the same time. You might soon see it at a bank or maybe a bar. The technology will also find its way onto iPad-style tablet computers. And it can see objects too, turning this can of energy drink into a video library. And now within the can, if you will, as it looks, is there's actually data within it. We kind of invest in a, a number of areas that we think are going to be important to the future. One would be the emergence of this trend of natural user interfaces, the idea of starting to make technology invisible. Uh, we see that today in things like touch and gesture and speech, and that, that's going to go much further. Technology is really going to become uh, you know, an aid to what you do. It's going to anticipate your needs and, and really start to become, you know, fade into the background. The strategy of making technology more natural is already paying off. Take the Xbox Connect, a sensor that allows you to play computer games just through your body movements. More than 8 million of them were shipped in the first two months, and it's entirely based on research done here in Microsoft Labs. Folks here in Redmond will be hoping that the other ideas they're working on can be an even bigger hit. Benjamin Cohen, Channel 4 News, Redmond. Or more appropriately, <laughs> Benjamin Cohen, Channel 4 News, Redmond. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Side on like that.